Hello and welcome back to my discussion on how to prepare a spreadsheet and cash flow statement under the direct method. This is part two. In part one, we learned how to prepare the cash flow from operating activities section of a spreadsheet. In part two, we're going to learn to prepare the investing and financing section and hopefully get to making the cash flow statement itself. Let's see how fast we can move. You'll recall that we're working on Dex Company. You have a balance sheet and an income statement. You have additional data, which you'll find we'll use a lot more for the rest of this. So if you haven't printed this page, please be sure and do so, because you're going to need that as we make our way through the cash flow from investing sections and the cash flow from financing sections. On the cash flow from investing sections, remember that we need to use all the remaining asset accounts to complete the cash flow from investing activities. So let's do that now on our spreadsheet. In our cash flow from operating activities, we analyze current assets and current liabilities and the income statement and cash flows from investing activities, which is where we are now, right here on our worksheet, cash flows from investing activities, what we need to do is to look at all remaining assets. We've already finished the income statement, so it doesn't drive this part of the cash flow worksheet creation. What now drives it is the balance sheet accounts. We need to go back to our current ass or to our assets and see what remains to be analyzed. We have long term investments, land, building and equipment, and accumulated depreciation. To understand the changes in these accounts, we must look at the additional data whenever there's a change in the account. Let's start with long-term investments. It went from 12 to 17. Let's check our additional data and see what happened. Item B deals with long-term investments. Let's take a look at that. The common stock of Bird Corporation was purchased for $5,000 as a long-term investment. Let's assume that was made with cash because we haven't any information to the contrary. So I believe on transaction number 10, and we purchased a long-term investment of five, and since they didn't say anything, we're going to assume that it was with cash, and we're going to go to cash flow from investing section, and we're going to say, we purchased a long-term investment, left off a T there, that will drive me crazy, for $5,000 cash. That would be a credit to cash. And so we'll thus have this be transaction number 10. And we're in balance. And notice that long-term investments has been analyzed. Next on the list is land. Land went from 45 to 55. We need to go back to our data and see what happened. Notice it says the property was acquired by issuing a 10% seven-year notes payable. While it's true that cash was unaffected by this, we do need to record this transaction. You'll recall from your reading and from prior investments that when you have a significant transaction that doesn't affect cash, you have to earmark it and show it on the cash flow statement. I'll show you my way of doing that on the spreadsheet. So we're on transaction. Number 11 and property was acquired for $10,000. So we'll enter our 10 on land and come down to 
notes payable on the balance sheet. There you are. And notes payable goes up for transaction number 11 by $10,000. And notice that in fact that we have now tied out land. It went from 45 plus 10 to 55. You'll notice I didn't write anything in the cash flow section down here because no cash was expended. But this is a non-cash transaction and we need to remember it happened. So I in some way flagged for myself that I need to make a note on that. And I usually use a star to show that I have a non-cash transaction affecting notes payable and land. So I remember to make that note when I make my financial statement. Let's see what's going on with building and equipment. Building and equipment started at 260 and it went down by 24. 260 minus 24 does not balance. That means that we need to look at our other data again. Our data, item D, says new equipment was purchased for $16,000 cash. I'm on transaction number 12 show new equipment was purchased for $16,000 cash. I think it was 16. Let me check. New equipment. Yes, yeah, $16,000 cash. And I'll come down here to my cash from investing activities and write purchased equipment and it was for cash. We're on transaction number 12. Purchased for $16,000 cash. How are we doing? On our equipment account, 260 plus 16 is 276. 276 minus 24 is 252. So we have reconciled that account. Let's check our next one accumulated depreciation. 60 mile plus 18. The credit balance is 60. So the 18 will be subtracted. That'll put us at 42 plus an additional 4 is 46. That account is balanced. I want you to notice that we have analyzed all the other assets in this section of our cash flow statement where we were looking at cash flows from investing and we have two transactions that decrease cash and one that increase it. So we have an inflow of five and an outflow of five and sixteen. Five minus five is 0 minus another 16, so minus 16. When I net these inflows and outflows, it shows a net cash outflow from investing of $16. Let me show you. I've expanded the worksheet to show you what that formula looks like. If I can get my cursor up there, huh? D48 minus D49 and D50 equals that 16. So, we've completed the cash flow from investing section. Back to our instructions. It said to check for completeness. We did that as we went and calculate net cash flow from investing. That's done. It looks like we're now down to cash flow from financing. We need to use all the remaining liability and equity accounts to complete the cash flow from financing activities section. And once again, most of those are going to require that we refer to the additional information as needed. So we'll do that. And once again, we'll check for completeness as we go, because it's rather easy to do in this section. And then we'll calculate the net cash flow from financing activities. Let's go to our spreadsheet and see what's next. The next thing on our spreadsheet shows bonds payable. And the bonds payable goes from 
5 to 100. It increases by 25. We need to go to our additional data to see what caused that. I love how the author put all this in order on additional data. Much easier. It says on January 1st, 2013, bonds were sold at their $25,000 face value. Let's enter that on our spreadsheet. Bonds were sold for 25000 That would be a credit. We're increasing bonds. And we're on transaction 13. So I'll show bonds going up. And now I'm in the cash flow from financing. And I'm going to say proceeds from a bond issue. I'm just making a worksheet. So it's good enough to just write down enough information so that I can understand what happened when I go to make my cash flow statement. And it's an inflow, so maybe I better show is it a debit to cash, huh? We're on 13, and I'll enter my 25. Oh no, my spreadsheet's out of balance. What happened? I was in balance before this, but I'm not in balance now. Let's see what's happening in these cells. They should be summing transactions from D2 to D53. And oh, look, I added a line, and it's only, it's left one line out. I better fix that to pick up 53 and enter that. And now my spreadsheet balances, and I better fix that over here, too. I added a line when you weren't looking. Ah, there we go. But you can tell. I'm keeping my eye on that, can't you? Well, it looks to me like that takes care of notes payable. 0 plus 10 is 10, and 75 plus 25 is 100, so notes payable and bonds payable are okay. Discount was okay already. Now we're down to common stock. Now remember that common stock and paid in capital move together. When you issue stock, paid in capital usually changes. So odds are I'm going to analyze those two at the same time. Let's see what happened. Let's go to our additional data. The additional data says that I did a stock dividend, a 5% stock dividend, a small stock dividend, when the market price of the par value stock was $14 per share. If you'll recall, when you have a small stock dividend, which 5% is, you must capitalize that at the full amount of $14 per share. That will be $10 per share into common stock and an additional $4 into paid in capital. And there are 1,000 shares. Let's go to our spreadsheet. So I issued some common stock. I issued common stock in the amount of 10 or 1,000, and I issued paid in capital in the amount of 4. As you'll recall, it was $14 per share, and we're um, rounding it off, taking off the zeros. And we're on transaction number 14. So I've recorded the issue of stock and the increase in par value from the small stock dividend. And all dividends come out of retained earnings, so I better take the $14 out of retained earnings. Where does that leave me in my analysis? 200 plus 10 is 210, and 20 plus 4 is 24, so I'm down to just understanding retained earnings and treasury stock. Retained earnings would say 40 minus 14, 26, plus 37 is not 47. So I'm obviously missing something that's making that smaller. So I'm going to go and check my spreadsheet. And I'm also going to enter a line on my, I'm going to check my additional data. And I can say I need another line on my spreadsheet. So I'm going to enter that while I'm gone too. Item G says we paid a cash dividend of 
$14,000 to shareholders, so retained earnings needs to go down for that, and we need to report, record that on our cash flow statement. So let's adjust our spreadsheet accordingly. So we paid a $14 dividend. We need to record that on our spreadsheet. Forgive me, I had a knock on the door, and I'm not sure if I showed you that on the additional data, but if I didn't, run and look, and you'll see we pay a $14 dividend. I'm sorry. So we need to come down to this cash flow from financing and write paid a dividend. Paid a dividend. I see the I, the ID spelled it right. How nice. And we're on number 15. And we'll come over here and put 14 there. So, Let's see how we're doing on all of this. Retained earnings is 40 minus 14 minus 14 minus 37, and that does equal 49. So we're done with retained earnings. We have only one more thing to do, and that's treasury stock. Notice it started at 0 and ended at 5. Let's check our additional data or our general ledger if we had one to see if we can answer that. Notice our last item on November 12th, 500 shares of common stock was repurchased at Treasury stock at a cost of 5000 Treasury stock has a debit balance, so I'll enter 16, my transaction number 16, and enter my Treasury stock of 5000 and cash paid. Treasury stock, writing fast now, for 5000 in this transaction is number 16. Notice that we are now through with every single account, but cash, that means we're through with the financing sections, and this would be our cash flow items from financing. One inflow of 25 and two outflows of 19, netting to 6. Our cash flows from operations, from investing, and from financing have all been identified. Every account but cash has been reconciled, but I'm not in balance here. Oh no, now what's happened? Well, you can tell I'm keeping my eye on it. And once again, since I added a line for retained earnings, this doesn't cover all of my financing. I need to change that to be 56. Now we're in balance. And I probably ought to change that one just to be in a matter of good form to 56 at the same time. We're in balance. There's only one thing left to add, and that's the change in cash. Cash went from 26 to 50, or just, that's a change of $45. So for my last transaction, I'm going to record change in cash in the amount of $45. Cash increase, so I'll show that as a debit. And because I need a credit to make this whole thing total, I'll show the change down here as well. And we're on item number 17. I am through. I have my change in cash done. Everything's in balance. All my accounts are reconciled. And I total. I'm ready to make the cash flow statement. My cash flow statement is going to be made from everything from here down. I analyzed my financial statements, looked at the change in them, and recorded the balances down here. I can now make a cash flow statement from just these numbers. Rather than try to blast through the cash flow statement in 35 seconds or less, I regrettably am going to add a part 3 to this. But you've now made your worksheet, and the only thing you have left to do is to copy these numbers onto cash flow statement. Let's see how that happens. I'll be back for part 3.